Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabans. I to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we give you guys a fresh perspective on things. And I would see them today. We got a hell of a show for you guys, full of fireworks. Uh, but before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, we have a goal of trying to hit 200,000 subs by the end of this month. So really appreciate it if you guys helped us and hit our goal. Anyway, let me get into this topic here. Uh, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about Bronny James. We, we seldom do it, but today... Uh, we're going to talk about it. And this video was prompted by a clip that I saw earlier this morning that involved Mark Spears basically going on ESPN and explaining what some NBA scouts told him about Bronny James's prospects as an NBA player. Well, on that panel, Kendrick Perkins was also on that panel as well. I think Ramona Shelburne was on that panel as well. And I forgot who else was on the panel, but they were discussing, uh, you know, um, Bronny James as an NBA player. So as they were talking you could see that Kendrick Perkins started to get visibly annoyed. And as the conversation went on, he kept on getting more agitated. And then at a certain point, he's like, listen, um, the only reason we are up here talking about Bronny James is because he's LeBron's son. And he said that, look, I feel like we're doing a disservice to other players that are more deserving of the attention th to just sit here and talk about Bronny James when there are other players that have greater prospects. And then got into this back and forth. And essentially, Ramona Shelburne and these guys were basically arguing for the right to talk about Bronny James because, hey, listen, it makes a lot of money. Cause that's the only other reason I can think of them doing it. Right. And it got into this pretty, pretty, um, you know, awkward, uh, aw awkward back and forth. But Kendrick Perkins was essentially calling out ESPN and a lot of these major networks for basically doing this. He's like, y'all know that he's not good enough, but nevertheless, we spend every single waking hour uh, talking about him. And if it wasn't for LeBron James, who's his father, we would not be discussing him if he had another name on the back of his jersey. And it got into this pretty, pretty, uh, 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 you know, um, not heated, but kind of a little bit contested uh, back and forth. But before we even get into that, this video is brought to you by brand new sponsor, Game Time, who's the official sponsor of today's show. Game Time Tickets is an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets faster and easier than ever. For example, I am super excited about the games between the Denver Nuggets and the Minnesota Timberwolves this week. With Game Time Tickets, I can easily pick the best tickets for me. I love that I can choose between different deals. I have the option to select the cheaper deal, the best option deal, or my favorite, the flash deal. The flash deal gives me the option to find discounts that I can only find on game time. Once I select the ticket I want, I can see view my seat. And it's not just restricted to the NBA. I can also look for the best ticket deals for other sports like football, baseball, or concerts, or comedy, or theater shows. Included in my purchase, I also have a 24-hour return guarantee, a lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection so take the guesswork out of buying nba tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code clns for 20 dollars off your first purchase again create an account and redeem code clns for 20 dollars off and remember whenever you support this sponsor you're supporting this channel thank you so what we want to do now is want to play the full commentary from kendrick perkins on this topic, and I'm gonna come back and react to what he has to say. Take a listen to what Kendrick Perkins had to say here. When I'm looking at Bronny, do I think he could be a pro? Absolutely, he's gonna he's gonna be a role player as a professional. That's okay. I can see his ceiling if he reaches ceiling of being an Eric Bledsoe type player, but that's in years to come. It's going to be a development process. He's going to have to go to the right organization yeah. that's going to be willing to be patient with him. But at the end of the day, right, we're talking about Bronny, and my thing is I want him to write his own book. And I didn't like when LeBron showed up to the draft combine for the simple fact that if you're trying to detach yourself from him, then you don't show up. You let him have his moment. Look, here's what I liked. I liked that we finally heard from Bronny. I know you did like the first interview with Bronny a couple of years ago at the Combine up there, or the, the, Hoop the, the Who Summit up in Portland. Um, but we have not heard that much from him in his own voice, in his own words. I actually like that he said, that's my dad's dream to play together. Like, I like I like that he addressed that, that he knows where exactly how he, where he stands. Because until this, we've kind of just seen him post on Instagram. 
Like, we've seen highlight videos, but he has not spoken for himself all that much. And so I think that's a, a, a good sign. I think what I'm hearing, look, he's not a Nepo baby, okay? That's what you're basically saying. Like, he's, he, he's, he got a legitimate NBA player. Now, is he a starter? Is he an all-star? Not at this point in his development. Can he, can he get a two-way contract someplace? Is that the best path for him? I don't know. I mean, and I think that's where the, the fact they had a coaching change at USC, that he's in the draft, that he yeah. kind of lost some of his offseason and this season because of his health issues. That's where the, but you, he needs some more time to bake, clearly. But where is the best time for him to bake? Is it in the NBA on a roster where people are invested in his development? <laughs> or is it in a college where he has another coach that he feels comfortable with? You can only make this decision once, right? And I also asked the scouts, does him going back to college improve his – draft stock one of the scouts said yeah. I do think in four years or after four years he's a legitimate NBA player the other one said no I just see him as an old senior hey, so. look let me say this we have to stop we have to stop as the media and everybody else shining the light on on Bronny because it's other players that are deserving that deserve our attention right the lottery guys the guys that are actually like going yeah that are going to get drafted in the first round like we're talking about a guy, a young man, that's possibly going to go late second round yeah. or not getting drafted at all. That it, I've never, in my four years of working here, I've never sat on the table where we're talking okay. about a second round pick. But this is LeBron James' son, and Thank that is you. a legitimate storyline that one of the greatest of all times has a son trying to play in the NBA at the same time. And you have to give Bronny credit for actually trying to say the right yeah. thing, showing up in the right places. And at the end of the day, and by the way, I like seeing LeBron you. in the stands as a proud dad. I like that. that that's this a great example from is fatherhood. The number one scorer in NBA. History. What does that have yeah. to do with his son being I mean, at look, the draft? Scottie Pippen kid was my, playing uh, on the Lakers. But my, we didn't shine the light on Scottie Pippen's son like this. We can't move the goalposts and feel like we go do okay, it when it's so convenient when, when, for, when for us. Say, when we say Nepo baby, that means that you have the same career, you know, parents to child. And so for those of Somebody's a Hollywood exactly. producer, their son or daughter the gets a job. But yeah, he has it. the same dreams and he does get a little bit of the benefit yeah. of the doubt. This I is wish the guy I who wish has, But can we talk about this, y'all? This is a guy that who's given his life to the game, LeBron yeah. James. Oh. And if and if the so, byproduct no is that Ronnie gets a little bit of a nod, maybe, maybe there is though. Maybe that's okay. Because like because right now LeBron is still at the peak of his game where he has the leverage to maybe get the Lakers and maybe and guess what? Maybe the team. Do you that want it that way? May, I, I wouldn't. However, if it's got to be done, it's got. That's the only way. That's the only way. Look, I, I look. I want Bronny to be successful. I think all of us do. But I'm yeah. also. I know. But I'm also being a realist here. Yeah. Like we're First we're literally all, spending ten to ten to twelve. Huh? Look, if Stone, my favorite guy, Stone, I, at the NBA Combine, I, I bet you will be working. I get out of his way. I get out of his way. Yeah. I get out of his way. See, here's the thing, right? Again. We're talking about a young man who's projected to go late second round, early first round. Like, I get it, man, but it's like, damn. But if we're going to fault the media for talking about it, fault the teams that actually might make the decision. There, and I do think there's what? more They're teams than Lakers him, that would take him. Maybe not necessarily for his talents right now. It might well, be uh, the I want to hear from the, the team. The overall benefits of I want to hear from the team. You don't see so you heard what Kendrick Perkins had to say. What are my thoughts on what Kendrick had to say? I think Kendrick, first of all, Kendrick Perkins has been on one over the last few weeks. Uh, he's been really calling it like it is, and I've been surprised because Kendrick Perkins used to be one of these LeBron guys that LeBron could do no wrong, nothing, nothing like that. And now he seems to be speaking his mind a little bit more. Look, um, are there people out there that share the same viewpoint of Kendrick Perkins? Well, sure. 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 Absolutely. Right. And it's the same group of people that wondered, okay, all of these years that the Lakers weren't so good over the last two or three seasons, why do we talk about them so much? It's something that you heard Charles Barkley complain bitterly about on uh, Inside the NBA or NBA on TNT on many occasions. The Lakers aren't that good. Why are we up here talking about them? Why are we up here talking about them? Well, this goes in the same vein. Now, they also discuss nepotism. Uh, and is nepotism at play here? First of all, nepotism is real, right? In the case of Bronny James and LeBron James, whether or not uh Bronny James is embracing the nepotism whether or not he chooses to embrace it it is working in his favor because whether or not you decide to say well you know I'm LeBron James the fact of the matter is you're LeBron's son so even though you work hard and I'm sure he does work hard you have your dreams you're working towards them but if you decided to go into the arena of basketball which is where your father made his name for himself as a professional uh it's going to help you 
right? It's going to help you. It's going to work in your favor, whether you want it or not, because you're LeBron James's son. And people are going to take a second look at you regardless. I've, I'm, a, I'm a huge Formula One uh, 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 supporter. Michael Schumacher, who's the equivalent of a Michael Jordan or something like this. He had a son, I think is uh, Mike, Mick Schumacher or something like that. I forgot his name. And he started driving to, for the Mercedes team. Now, ultimately, he wasn't good enough to stay there. And he, become like a, he became like a backup driver or something like that. But nevertheless... His father is still who he is. He's still, he's still Michael Schumacher. He's still a seven-time champion. It's still him. So just by them hearing na his name, team principles, is Michael, yeah, they're going to give you a second look. And even if you may not be as talented as they would like, just by the name, it works in your favor. So whether or not you embrace it or not is a totally different thing. Now, in the case of what Kendrick Perkins is speaking to directly in terms of why are we talking about him so much when there are other players that are more qualified, well, I think that's a fair point. I think that is a fair point. But the media has been promoting him. You know, they have been marketing him. They've been promoting him. They always, every time you jump on Instagram, they're posting him on the, the various pages, Bleed Report, uh, 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 House of Highlights, ESPN, Sports Center, you name them. They're always talking about him. Uh, and I think that this is what comes with being LeBron James's son, right? And ESPN is going to continue to talk about him. You heard Ramona Shelburne basically up there fighting for the... Now, the points that they were making about he's articulated and all of that has nothing to do with his ability as an NBA player. That was just pretty sad. I get what they're saying. But we're talking about being drafted for the NBA. That has nothing to how you articulate yourself and how you speak has nothing to do with that. Right? It has absolutely nothing to do with that. But you can see that uh, ESPN, because, you know, Ramona Shelburne and these guys are really arguing for the right to continue to discuss him. And they believe that he must be, he needs to be discussed uh, at all times, whether we agree with it or not. It just seems like Kendrick Perkins, however, is beginning to reach his breaking point with this. Right. And now he's just saying what he truly, truly believes. I don't know how higher ups at ESPN feel about someone speaking that candidly uh, about these particular issues. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But nevertheless, that's what he thought. And I thought it was a pretty, pretty uh, interesting back and forth that they had on television there. So what I want to know from you guys, what do you think about what was said? What do you what do you think about what Kendrick Perkins had to say? Do you are you on his side or your Ramona, Ramona Shelburne side? And what do you think about today's analysis and the show that we brought for up? To you guys today whatever you guys think leave your thoughts in the comments and we catch you guys on the next show peace